What up, what up, man? So here with a um, album review. I hope y'all enjoyed the other reviews. Hopefully this will upload. But as always, of course your boy is here with a new joint album review. Nicki Minaj, the Pink Print, um, the deluxe version, which drops Monday. You know the version I listen to has 22 tracks. You know that's a lot of songs to get through. But this, to me, honestly, is one of her most personal albums. A very mature album. And let's be frank, she did more rapping on this project than she did on any other project. You know, from Pink Friday, Pink Friday, Rum Reloaded, Pink Friday, Rum Reloaded, the re up. You know what I'm saying? I just feel like she just went in a whole totally different place. And I fuck with it, man. Um, far as features, you already know you got um, Beyonce, Ariana Grande, Jesse Ware, Lil Wayne, Chris Brown, Drake, Meek Mill, Lunch Money Lewis, um, Skylar Gray, of course. And yeah, man, she just definitely did her thing. From the first record, all things go, you know, um, it's about her family, you know, love, um, certain situations. Just a personal record, you know. We all we all heard that record with melodic beat, uh, deep, open, honest lyrics. Um, the hook was passionate as hell. Her flow was ill. She just let it all out and just you know, let people know that besides me being famous, you know, I still have to deal with the the situations in my personal life. You know, at one point she was pregnant, so I'm guessing she either had an abortion, somebody in her family died. You know, her family don't look at her as Nicki Minaj. They look at her as, you know, her sister. They don't want, like, I guess she's saying, I don't want you to look at me as Nicki Minaj, I'm your sister. So I definitely feel like the opening track, All Things Go, definitely a good track. Of course, moving on to, um... Number two, I Lied. Uh, she did her rap sing thing. You know, a song about not wanting to be uh, basically hurt or lied to. You know what I'm saying? Um, you could tell us about her personal situation with her boyfriend, Safari. And most of these records uh, are inspired by him or about him. We all know that. And I'm definitely glad she didn't take the whole album and do that because I thought it was going to be one of them albums to where she just dedicate the heartbreak album you know what i'm saying but she didn't do that but i lie uh, definitely a song that um a lot of women probably can relate to you know the reason why they lie to they do to i guess protect you know him and herself at the same time still a great song um the crying game featuring jesse Ware, um a dope record all the way through it's basically about wanting love you know and not wanting to play the crying game we all know what the crying game is you know um it's also <laughs> A title to a movie which I don't want to discuss but I'm quite sure y'all know about it but definitely it was a good thing on this record man Jessie Ware did her thing on a uh, hook and I fuck with it uh number four get on your knees featuring Ariana Grande I was I had to listen to this shit like three times to keep it real it's basically about you know basically a man begging her for the pussy either to eat it either to you know have sex with her but she basically telling you to get on your knees and show me you really want it beg for it and i'm keeping it real for most niggas i'm not begging no bitch for it. you know what i'm saying no pussy you gonna give it to me or you not but far as um her lyric ability was there ariana grande nikki didn't even need her but i guess it helps you know she definitely did her thing added what she added to the record and you know just basically nikki just wanted you to you know she just wants to sit on your face I would be lying if I said I never, you know, went down on a chick. I'm quite sure most niggas have. Some niggas make it their whole life to eat bitches out. That ain't really my thing, you dig? If I'm with a woman for a certain amount of years, then I guess, you know, she earned that if you really love her. Moving on to the next track, Feeling Myself featuring Beyonce. That song get three checks, you know. Uh, I was talking to one of my fellow YouTube subs. What up, Joanne? She even was saying that Beyonce really didn't add that much to it. And I agree, you know, the hook was okay, you know, more of a Houston thing, but... Um, be, uh, Nicki Minaj killed that shit, you know, said she the queen of rap. Um, her bars was there. Um, the flow was crazy. She spazzed on that record. But these two collaborated. You know, it's a good record, but it's not better than a flawless remix, in my personal opinion. But still, she did her thing on it, and it was a great record. Moving on to Only, that get three checks. You know, it's actually glad to hear it with uh the cussing in it you know drake did his thing little wayne chris brown we already know about the song we heard it they play off each other verse chris brown did what he did to the record definitely is another uh great song uh once some more definitely the production was different on this you know zaytoven did this beat um 
it, the beat was hard. Her flow was crazy. Uh, she she did a lot of shit on this record. You know what I mean? She set the record straight on a lot of things. Um, hinted that she signed to YM for a six album deal. Seeing how this is her third, she got like three more. Um, her bars was heavy. You know, the hook was dope. Her flow was just incredible. Just another great song. And at this point, I'm like, yo, we getting more rap than more of that singy songy type pop shit. And I respect that. Number uh, eight, Four Door, Ventador. Off top, her bars was crazy. You know what I'm saying? Um, the beat was hard as shit. She kind of had that Biggie flow. You know, some would say, well, she kind of sound like Little Kim. I'm not going to say that. But definitely you could see the Biggie influence in that record. Um, the hook was crazy. I like her raw lyrics and everything in that record. And it was dope as hell, man. Uh, moving on to Favorite featuring Jeremiah. Definitely she just basically saying she want to be number one and breaking down why, you know, I want to be your favorite. Uh, it was surprising to see Jeremiah on the hook, you know, seeing how she has more resources to other people. But I guess it's dope that she reached out to somebody that's not as popping or relevant. But he did his thing on it. I like the jazzy beat. Uh, I thought her flow was incredible. I like her bars on that record. She did a lot of shit talking. You know what I'm saying? Just letting the nigga know, like, yo, this is what it is. This is what it's going to be. But at the end of the day, I want you to feel like this when you leave my presence. So definitely, man, you got to admit, that was a great record. Uh, moving on to Buy a Heart featuring Meek Mill. It was some controversy with this record. They saying that it was Meek Mill's song. Or it was supposed to go on K. Michelle record. Or K. Michelle had it, but it didn't fit the mold. And whatever what have you but they both did their thing on it you can definitely see um the chemistry between them if you listen to nikki verse uh, i love the melodic beat i love that sample that sample was crazy uh it was a different record to hear meek 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 uh meek mill on definitely uh i think his flow complemented the record i love the hook it was a, a very powerful record so it was something different for me to hear from me because it's like yo street nigga on a record like this if he can continue successful records like this, he'll be in the next stratosphere, real shit. Um, number 10, and I mean, number 11, Trinity Them Girls featuring, I didn't like it. You know, uh, her her flow and spitting was on point. The the hook was whack. Like, I'm going to keep it real. Anaconda, y'all already know how I feel about that. Yeah, she got all the accolades for it, but I still thought it was a whack song. Moving on to The Night Is Still Young, definitely a party anthem. You know, you could say it's a pop song. I let a melodic beat. Her flow was on point. Melodic hook, you know, her lyrics and everything like that. It's just a fun record, and I definitely think that this is where the album picks up again with more of the, I guess, side of Nicki Minaj that pertains to women. I'm going to say it like that. Uh, number 14, Pills and Potion. Of course, I like that song. I give it three checks. It's just a dope record, you know I mean? From the catchiness of it, the melodic hook, you know, the beat, just the way she has the melody, the way she raps but sings. It's just an incredible record, powerful record. And I fuck with it. Um, Better Lies, of course, featuring Skylar Gray is the relationship record about her and Safari, of course. You know, um, it's just basically the ins and outs of a bad relationship or a relationship that, you know, is standing but then is sinking at the same time. And it is what it is. It's still a good record. Lady's going to feel that. Um, I like it. It's cool. You know, um, moving on to number 16, Grand Piano. Uh, such a beautiful song. I will say that. Uh, you definitely got to listen to what she's saying. The lyrics are deep, you know, um, dramatic feel to it. You know, it's just overall a raw emotion, you know, great vocals on it. The lyrics was deep, soulful hook. I definitely feel like this is one of the records where a lot of women is going to cater to that one. Uh, number 17, Big Daddy featuring Meek Mill. Uh, Nicki Spaz on that record, you know, Meek did what he did to it. Uh, good flows, great production. Just an overall great record. And that was a good look. Uh, Shanghai, number 18, definitely gave me that Chirac vibe. You know, it's not Chirac, but it still got the same vibe from it. The beat was fucking crazy. You could hear the uh, Shanghai influence as far as the, you know, the when you watch them Japanese karate movies, you could hear that in there. She spazzed on the flow. Like I said, the bars was heavy. You know, her lyrics was hard as hard hitting lyrics, you know. And the hook was cool as hell, man. Definitely fuck with that record. The last track, uh, number 19, Win Again. You, she took a shot at Iggy. Let's keep it real. You know, her flow was dope. The beat was dope. Her bars was fucking phenomenal. Um, good hook. The lyrics was hard. She was talking shit on that record. Through a lot of rap songs, she was talking shit like, I'm that bitch. I'm still that bitch. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You're going to like it. You're going to respect it. You ain't got no choice. So I definitely feel like just on the tracks 1 through 19, she had a complete album. 
but like I said, the version I heard had 22 tracks, so we still got three more to go. Uh, Mona Lisa is a bonus track. Um, it's a love song. You know, it's kind of short, but definitely you can understand that it adds more to the story of her and her boyfriend. If you really listen to it, you know, everything about it was great. I liked the background sound. And it was an honest record, so I salute her for that. Um, Pitch You in a Room. It's real personal. It's a story of love, you know, if you really listen to what she's saying. And I definitely feel like, damn, like, she really went through a lot with Do. I don't know how long they was together, but you could tell they've been through a lot, you know. And she put a lot into this album to where can't no fans say that they didn't get what they wanted from Nicki Minaj. The rap shit, she gave that and more but she still gave the side of her being a woman, and that's what you had to respect. And the last track, uh, 22, Truffle Butter, featuring Drake and Lil Wayne, um, these three never can go on on the record. You know, they did what they did. You know, it's about sex. Let's keep it real. You know, it's a sexual song. And, you know, it was, it was cool for what it was. You know what I mean? But overall, I'm proud of this album because I went into it just based on the cover, feeling like, damn, man, it's going to be one of them pop records. But it really wasn't that. I mean, she put out... Pills of Potion, Bed of Lies, um, Anaconda, you know, those three singles was definitely for the charts and everything like that, but she has material on here where I feel like she needs to cater to the rap side because she got so much of it. Of course, we may see a Buy a Heart featuring Meek Mill. Uh, we may see Favorite by Jeremiah. Um, she actually need to do a real video to Only. We may get the Feeling Myself record. But it's just a lot of work on here, though. I feel like she got a lot of songs that could be visuals for this album. But it's definitely worth the money. Um, come Monday, I'm definitely going to support. Um, out of all three of her albums, I say that this one is better than the last one, Roman Reloaded. But it can't touch the first one. Pink Friday was a classic, in my opinion. I give it a 9 out of 10, man. Songs, I like 20 out of 22. Production gets a 9 out of 10. She was creative. She was different. And... I respect that because she just didn't come and give you the same old, same old Nicki Minaj, the radio over pop sensation side, you know, with barely no rapping. She wrapped her ass off on this. She gave it to you. The pink print definitely fits, the song fits the title, you know. She giving you the pink print to her whole, you know, the thing about Nicki Minaj that make her Nicki Minaj. Of course, you hear the shots throughout the album of Iggy, still a shot at Lil' Kim, you know, niggas that be talking that rap shit and really ain't, you know, living that life. About just a bunch of good shit that is like, it's shocked me, you know. So it's like, what, 12.50 in the morning and I started listening to this shit. Let's say it took me almost two hours to listen to this whole project. You know what I mean? Just because I went back and listened to songs and really got the feeling of it. I listened to only at least three times because it was just crazy to just hear Wayne. Wayne had an incredible verse on that song. Um, Meek Mill verse on the first record was great. Um, hearing the crying game over. So you have to respect the side that she gave it, catered to the females and the men. It was equal on this album and you got to respect that. So my hat go off to Nicki Minaj. I definitely see this album doing well. I definitely feel like people need to go out and support uh, if it's physical copies online because she definitely gave the fans what they've been waiting for and it's well deserved though. Now I did see an extra bonus package that comes with like a, a hoodie and a calendar. Now that's kind of like what Beyonce doing so I don't really want to trend in that. And that's one thing that B did say in a song that yo, when I dropped the album, whether if I was a male or female rapper pop, I shut the world down. Like, I shut the world down, you feel me? And that she did. But y'all let me know what y'all think about this album. I thought it was fucking incredible. I may listen to it one more time, but other than that, Hip Hop Kicks, I'm out.